So today I'm just going to briefly explain sort of some of the things that might be unclear about the project itself, such as like Automa Turkish, Transcurvus, and Hendren and Tech Signation softwares. And then I will go on to sort of briefly outline why's of this project and a kind of contribution it makes to the field. And then I'll go into a little bit more technical details. So uh, please bear with me because I think those are very interesting for multilingual DH especially. And then I will talk about two rounds of uh, machine learning based training that I've done for this model. So the overview of the project. So what is Ottoman Turkish? Ottoman Turkish is the language of the administration of the Ottoman state. So it's basically like a written language, although the spoken Turkish is much closer to modern Turkish that we have today. During the Ottoman Empire, written Turkish was uh, written Ottoman, Ottoman Turkish was a bit more sort of like filled with like Arabic and Persian vocabulary. It was a bit like a higher language, and it was written from right to left using Arabic Persian script. And I am doing a PhD at the history department in Stanford, and my focus is the sort of the northern borderlands, north of the Danube, so modern day Ukraine, Romania, Moldavia those regions and how they, how they interacted in the end, end of the 18th century with the imperial changes in the region. So that is the reason why I look mostly into state documents. And these are mainly documents that are sent from the provinces to Istanbul and not to documents like uh, books or poetry and literary genres that they're not included in this model. But the uh, main question is, for me at least during my research was to find out ways of analyzing the news networks between the province and the center and how information travels. And for that reason, I started reading reports and, and of various kinds. And then I realized to be able to find like better conclusions, I need probably to test out like test analytical tools to see what I can do with those. But then there is no way of using a system to have like an optical character recognition, OCR, or handwritten text recognition for the period that I'm interested in. Although there are currently models being developed for various periods and various script types of bottom Turkish, there is currently nothing that would help me well get a larger corpus out of these documents that I have. And there, and then the, the way that the Ottoman Turkish, like the archives in Istanbul are organized with the Ottoman Turkish documents. The scans are pretty high quality, and it is really focused on scanning and putting out as much documents as possible into the system. So I have that advantage of like having access to like uh, virtual copies of documents, but not having the right tools to like create a larger corpus with them. And that was literally the reason why I started figuring out a way to do this. And Transcribus is a software developed through EU funds that helps scholars who are focusing on a language train models by uploading their transcribed data. So the, um, the way that it works, as you can see here briefly, this is the software and then you upload your documents and then this is what the document view looks like and then you upload your transcriptions. So mainly uh, Transcribus has been used for like various European languages. It has had great success in German handwriting of the early modern period. But um, so far, we're, there, we're, there are projects on transcripts working with Ottoman Turkish, obviously, but it's still sort of developing in the fields of um, non, non European languages. And yes, and then sort of longer term goals of this project is also to be able to have a search function through documents, searching for keywords, which is currently not available, not even in the Ottoman archives. So we search through the summaries of documents provided by archivists. And uh, yeah, like down the line to enable all scholars working in, in this field to have like an idea about how to go about this kind of a project. And, but there are some technical difficulties. Yeah, come on, did you can like I'm, in Arabic script, it's written from right to left. And modern Turkish started in 1928 and early Republican reforms started being written in Latin script. And the alphabet reform meant that the, the modern Turkish is now written from left to right. And that also came with a, um, an addition of vowels. So Arabic doesn't have, Turkish language has more vowels than Arabic letters can represent, which means that like certain letters end up being used both as vowels and as consonants, long vowels and consonants. And then sometimes if it's like just a letter like U, it can be read as like a U, a U, a, 
and oh in, in modern Turkish. And it means that when we're transcribing for a modern Turkish, we need to add those letters. And so, same with the machine, the machine has to learn to add those letters. And then there are also like special transcription conventions that require us to like mark certain letters in a certain way. Like we have one K in modern Turkish, but in Ottoman Turkish, there were two different ones so that the one and the other are differentiated by using diacritics, which, um, but then the particular problem of right to left and left to right is really interesting because it meant that in early stages of my research, I would have to like use uh, Python coding a little bit to reverse the text that I uploaded. And it resulted in actually, you know, like I, I'm not sure how far it is visible, but this is also reverse text here. <laughs> and the way that I would have to read my own and then edit through my own documents was that I would have to like, read from here, whereas I normally would obviously start reading from here, but transcribe starting from here. And so that created different issues. Similarly with segmentation, since the, uh, the transcribus assumes the documents are written from left to right, the segmentation and the lines start over here, which means that if a line, but this is the end of the line, and Ottoman Turkish texts love curving up at the end of their lines. So that created certain, issues with segmentation that I had to find creative ways of resolving. For example, this, I wasn't able to add to the end of the sentence. So I would have to like make a separate line for that. And then, but these are more typical problems. Sometimes they write up like certain sections of the word on top of the, like, this is like a last syllabi of the word that they would have to write on top of it. So that one I had to just like uh, deal with that. And, but yeah, these are quite interesting challenges, and especially considering that the software that we're using were not designed to be used by the languages that we're using them right now. There's a slow process of, of adaptation. But I will reflect on that a little bit later, but Transcribus is at least successfully sort of responding to our needs as more people in, in our fields and our languages use these softwares. And this is a little bit longer on the, on the issue of consonants versus long vowels. I'm going to be very brief about it. You can see that here, this letter called Vav, it can be both like a V and um, like a vowel, like a O or U, uh, with the, the dots, the Turkish U, O or U. And it mean, this means that, and this is a tricky example, but it comes up a lot in my documents because it refers to the voivodes in the provinces or sending these um, reports. But then it means that the machine has certain complications of understanding when it's in learning and it takes a longer time and it requires a longer data set. And here you can see the same letter. And in this case, the letter is supposed to be a U. But then the, like, the machine thought in like one of the, after the first round of training, that was supposed to be a V. Uh, but then here it was fine with like transcribing it as a U. And here as well, but then there are like different complications. So it's really sort of a, a different approach with the, the vowels being added. To the to the birds as opposed to like already being there and then the training so my training data like i said was really based coming out of my historical research and that's why i had about actually for my research i had a little bit more than ten thousand words all hand transcribed for the purposes of like another paper and then i've selected some of them i've decided to leave out because of the differences in the script and I was also reading some of their materials that didn't really fit in with this. So I ended up with about 7,200 words, which is less than sort of the 10,000 words is the ballpark for like training a model from zero. And so that was the little sort of, it was lacking, but you know, like start with whatever you have. So I'm quite uh, proud of it actually. And then I had about one, uh, so 21 point, 82% of uh, character recognition error rate in the, in the test day. So what, what happens in this training process is that you upload those, these data, these documents with the transcriptions, and then you pick one. Well, usually you should pick more than one, but I picked one due to the amount of documents that I had for the validation set. And then after training the model based on this information, the model tests itself on the validation set. And then since I've already uploaded a transcription of this validation set, the they can check back how much of it the machine got wrong. And it got wrong about like 20, 21.82% of, um, of the words 
characters. And, but then there is still some hopeful elements. Since my data set is pretty close, I have like a lot of similar documents. And that means there are a lot of like repeating tags. And in, this is a document that I've uploaded later on that wasn't a part of the original set. And in that document, you can see that it had relative success. And so this is the part the, the addressing part of like how to write to someone. This is like the letter heading in a way. And that part sort of got pretty good. Like it was, and then this also repeats at the end because it refers to the Sultan in this case. So those are pretty fine because they repeated a lot of times and they followed like one another a lot of times. So it was like a standardized phrase, but then it had issues with certain um, words like Eflak, this is Valakia, that's a, uh, like a difficult word that wasn't always so easy, but then words that repeated a lot like dafa or dair, but like enough repetitions also like seem to be <laughs> coming out of the model pretty fine despite of like not having added enough training data. And then the question emerges that, what, how am I gonna go forward with this? Because it takes months to transcribe documents like, and then I also have other research. So the solution was uh, collaboration. And I got documents uh, from a colleague of mine from Vienna that I could use for the model training, which will in turn be used in the project on Academy of Sciences in Vienna. And, but his documents are a little bit different in the sense that they also like go into the first half of the 19th century, but then it does add diversity. So there's that advantage of diversity of script. And, um, Meanwhile, which is something I want to briefly touch upon, transcript was last like middle of March added a function of being able to reverse text while training a model. So I no longer have to upload documents reversed. I can upload them as, as I normally would. And I could click this reverse text function and I could even choose to exclude digits because the way that Ottoman Turkish works is that the digits are not reversed. So like in a text that you read from right to left, you end up at a digit, which usually happens at the end of the text when the date is shown in my documents. And then you have to read it from left to right. Uh, but I had, um, I used the same documents as I've, like in the, as I've done in the first round. I re-uploaded all of them, redid the segmentations and also like uploaded the transcriptions. And I actually had uh, about 19% um, 19, 19.4% around that like error, error rate. So the error rate went down to percent using the same documents. I also got about like 40 more words somehow. I didn't change the transcriptions themselves except for editing a few letters to fit like another transcription style, but that was very minor. So yeah, I, and then I've used the same document for the validation task. So I think it's quite interesting that we, and then I think this relates, of course, there are probably other ex explanations, but this is also sort of, for me, a sign that when the tools and then the sort of like softwares that have, you know, that have been dev developed based on non, based on languages different than ours, when we try to come up with ways to like fit into their models, we have a harder time than when they have a way of accommodating us and adding features that would support our own research much better. So yeah, this is um, a great sign and I have a much easier time editing now than I, that I don't have to read the first. And, and then, so my goal actually for this presentation was to finish up the data training but using the text that I got from my colleague. And so the way that we do it when you're reading documents is we just like, sit down and mostly type them in like whatever is closest to modern Turkish. So what ends up happening is we don't really use a transcription alphabet, but we, since we decided to use a transcription alphabet for the, uh, for the model training, it means that I would have to do a lot of editing. And that this is sort of like the editing software that I use since a lot of words come up in all of these documents, I find it easier to do like a multi-file search to edit these documents. But then I have to be careful that with, you know, like, but the way that sometimes they just pop up in the middle of another word just because the letters fit. So I have to be careful with that. And I use a lot of dictionaries, obviously, to make sure that like my transcriptions are correct and that the words that I'm reading are so like I'm double checking them. And I'm using a keyboard that I've um, using Eucalyla. I sort of wrote a keyboard 
for being able to type these like special diacritic characters, which um, which was successful. But then it turns out, like when I tried to use it, I forgot to add a function for the space bar. So the keyboard doesn't have like I can't put spaces with the keyboard. So this is the stuff that I probably wasn't going to show if I had been able to complete the stages. But I still wanted to share with you because it's uh, an essential part of the DH work that we do that like we just go through a lot of editing and you know like be it like trying to develop a regex for file sorting uploading things to database manually and this is I think a huge part of like digital humanities that um, I you know find worthy of mentioning and sharing with you guys and um, yeah thank you all for listening so that the future perspectives are really just sort of you know, can we have a text collection in Ottoman and Turkish that we can do with the reading with? That's sort of my big question.